It wasn't predicted that this kind of power is possible. Oh no, he's roping. He's actually roping. Hello everyone, it's Love here and today, guys, I'm so excited to showcase this particular Esper. This deck feels like an ultimate power. You have Mindless Apparatus, so you know where this is going, but on top of this you have cards like 3 steps ahead that can copy the Mindless Apparatus and then you go for those insane robber. like you will see it in this video, one of the biggest robbers ever cast on this channel. And man... <laughs> I'll tell you, they didn't like it. They didn't like it. Uh, also, we have cards like Faithful Mending, March, so it's, it's actually a pretty decent deck in regards to just surviving against the aggro. This deck kinda has it all, and it's way more explosive than any other Esper control. So, honestly, I, I was really happy with the deck, and we ranked up to Diamond 3 with this one, so I think you will like it. So, guys, if you appreciate this kind of decks, don't forget to subscribe. Let's go to 15,000, because we are closer and closer. And thank you for all the subscriptions. I really do appreciate it. And you guys are awesome, and that makes it so fun to share the decks with you. So thank you for that. And let's go into action. All right, guys, we are going first. And, uh, I mean, the start is pretty classic, but I really like it, honestly. Uh, the only downside... Wow. <laughs> the Raffin Tower is still bouncing. Uh, Boros, right? It has to be red. Novice Inspector. Cool, cool, cool. You know the drill. You absolutely know the drill. However, we are really good at magic and we drew one of our untapped lands for turn 2. That means Normalize and Negate are both open and that's a huge deal. With this we probably won the game. <laughs> because as you can see, Suddenly, their deck does absolutely nothing and it's, you know, a little bit silly. One damage. Go for it. We go for the tap land. We want to, you know, start... Like, for this turn we have no more lies, that's for sure. We can also use March, but we probably won't need it. Uh, they cannot really cast anything because they had chorus mana and with this they have no pressure and we can also negate their, you know, next play. Double Mirex. One of the downsides playing Mirex in this kind of deck. Listen. I'm really consistent with my, you know, approach. By the way, look at this draw, man. <laughs> They're really good at magic. But the, I believe they were on the draw, right? So all of this is thanks to being on the on the play. And that also means we have memory. Man, we drew a lot of value in those two cards. You know, we got like probably 40 mana of value because it's 11 per memory deluge. And then you draw four cards, which are also, you know, uh, value. So <laughs> Yeah, that, that's some value pack draws. Well, Memory Dush is an extremely insane card. You, you have to admit it. Epicure. Very nice. Well, next time, play less Mirex in your deck. I, I know the, the pain because I was playing Boros and Mirex is good for turn 2 just because it gives you one red mana or one white mana so you can make the combo. But after that, well, it hurts. And yep, they lost. They are super far behind. And that means we are going for the land, probably. And Apparatus. Because he probably will take the next turn off. So we play Mines plus Apparatus. And we can go like this. We don't need 5 mana, absolutely. They won't go for the Leafa on the next turn because they don't have enough. So they will set up. Then we play Apparatus. Then we sun for 4 4 and we open all the plays. And if they. If they won't do enough, uh, you know, enough, that's even better, because this is not a lethal pressure yet. Like, it's 5 damage with the Recruiter, and it can attack on the next turn as, you know, oh, I'm not sad. So, let's go with the Apparatus. Like, we are disassembling them. Uh, we also have Mars, so we can just kill this, and just go for the next turn. And with this, our opponent, like, he scales so backwards right now. <laughs> And I don't want to use the Sunfall because theoretically I might not miss uh, the next one for uh, not hit them in the next one for a very long time. What would you say? You know what? Listen, it's that well, it's six damage. Let's go for it because every turn our our play is better just because of the discount and because it is combat phase already that means they cannot add any damage to this and every time we play land oh boy it's a difference 
And the cool part, the cool interaction, and I know, you know, the memory dish and the sinner, it's, it's still good. Because, for, for example, now, I can either draw two cards for two mana, which is a really good deal, man. Uh, or we can just go for the big memory dish, which costs five mana. And suddenly, we can cast it very easy on top of something else. Yep, he's so careful, but yeah. Uh, Warden probably is his, you know, bigger thing. But he needs to play something that is red. So let's see it. It definitely feels like Recruiter mana, but you know what happens when he plays Recruiter. And we have a discount, so I think we can cast everything. Sure. I appreciate it, my friend. Can I do all of this? <laughs> oh, it feels so great. Oh, I don't even pay a lot of mana for it. Well, 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 well. Uh, I think we go with Faithful Mending just because we can use the flashback, so we basically got the card still. And enjoy your two damage. My, yeah, you, you can go away. Like, you really can go away. But, I, you know, if you want to play, be my guest. I will assist you until the end. Just holding your hand. All right, so that's it. Let's see. <laughs> and I'm having so much more fun than he does. All right, let's go with the Mirex. Do I want to double blue on Memory Dush right now? Feels pretty decent, right? I don't need to sun for it. Man, look at how is this not good value? I'll take those. I will take those. Oh my god, I just doubled my value. Oh, and we are getting two counters a turn. Like, this is getting to an absolute ridiculous point where our opponent doesn't. Yeah, like, why is he even in the game? <laughs> I, I guess he can be because, you know, we have four cards. Maybe we missed something. We didn't sweep the board, so he has, you know. Uh, a legit reason to think that maybe we don't have a sweeper because most control players would probably just play a sweeper for those three one ones but we can just go for like they deal three okay L let's do the math while they you know they do the thing uh they deal three damage a turn and we play a land and we get two counters so march gets bigger by three that means they actually deal zero damage when we cast it finally so yeah uh, you can absolutely ignore it listen Listen, my friend, you were close, but not as close. They can go Recruiter, so we might actually sweep on the next turn just to, you know, uh, remove the fodder. And uh, let's go for the Mirma, I guess. No, not really difference. Look how much value we are getting. And every single spell forever will be basically free. All right, let's play land. We definitely want those. And... I think this might be... Yeah, we have Farewell, so let's just start with it. <laughs> you know, let's make our life a little bit easier. We also have the Reef, but we don't really need to go with it. Uh, Mirix is a little bit better, because it enables us to not tap every turn. Like, you tap once and you get permanent value. With the Reef, you, pay, you, you get the value as long as you are tapped, so it's, you know... A b way bigger downside, especially if you go for, you know, one turn if it doesn't really matter. Uh, but the more turns you have with the Mirex, the more it, you know, gives you advantage. We probably will care about the farewell until we draw the deadly uh, cover up. Here we go. You're the best. And soon we can start trading cards for cards. Main phase. Of course, why wouldn't you? So. Do we really go with the march or rather? I think we go for some really epic march. So we will probably kill this one and play Memory Dush, I would guess. We need to actually count the mana. I will probably keep this. We will have two spare mana every turn, so I don't think it's a problem. And I want to make sure they cannot use case uh, to, you know, do the thing uh, at sorcerer speed. I want them to, you know, invest at least one creature to force us to flip it. Alright, let's start removing his cards, because we will have more. And I can pay myself for two extra cards, and I absolutely will. I will take those. Well, not the most epic draw of the world, but <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Man, when we cast this march, he, he won't like it. Alright, another removal, that's a good one. I could start to be aggressive, to be absolutely honest. They don't have much time, and we have so much stuff. Like, I could also use the mending. I think we can just use Mirex's. He is fully tapped. By the way, we could punish it with Farewell and just, you know, kill the might that should be created at the end step. But we, we don't need to. 
So I could be way more aggressive, but I just cannot imagine us losing from this point. So I will just go for the fun place, you know? Uh, I really want to play March for like 40 or something, so I can see his despair and I will invoke it. <laughs> also, when we hit the robbery from the top at some point, we will basically mill his whole, his whole deck. He really likes to main phase this, but you know what? I'll take it. They want those scries. Alright. So we will march it, create a token, and probably start the... Like, they cannot attack into this. Here's the case. So they want to kill the creature. We'll get another one. But we'll see. I might exile it later, but we'll see. Because they will flip it. Probably. At some point during the game. Maybe. I ac actually don't know. Uh, let's go for this one. We we'll go for one. Remember, the later we cast March, the more epic it is. And we are nowhere close to being dead, so we don't need to do it. I can also use the rift because all my spells are so cheap that I can just, you know, keep using it. And I guess let's go... Well, I only want to cycle this land. So let's wait until we hit another card that we want to cycle. Oh boy. Oh boy, he won't like it. So he, now he needs to go into this poison plan, basically. And I think we will get the poison plan faster. So we both basically will have creatures that cannot block. Uh, but I have Reef and I have a token. See, he, he had the case, by the way, all this time. So that's why we didn't activate the token. Epic, absolutely fine. Like, he thinks that we are kinda close to being dead, so he can burn us. But when we cast Marsh, you <laughs> realize how not true that is. I think I will make a Might and the rest of the mana goes to one of the Marches. Get lost, alright. I guess it doesn't hit literally anything here. Uh, but he could wait for killing the token. So, you know, that's a decision. Oh, our target for March. Perfect. Absolutely love it. Doesn't make sense to make a token. So they will do it. Unless they want to attack into us, but you know. Like, you, maybe he wants untapped creatures that cannot block. Uh, I, I try to find logic, guys, but there, there, there isn't one. <laughs> All right, let's see. Unless they really attack and they will lose everything because they missed the reef and the token. But I really don't think, you know, he doesn't realize what's going on. Okay. Listen, guys. We're going this. He is fully tapped, so we know that our march goes through. Uh, oh, boy. So 10 mana for free. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I mean, that's a march for 16. And I'm all here for it. <laughs> Alright, here's your... what? Did I miscount? Right, so 15 I guess. Alright, we're going with 15 this time. I hope it will work. You work? Yeah, perfect. Just 15, so we are back to 28. <laughs> and our opponent does... To be absolutely honest, I should wait even more because I'm nowhere near the far right now. So I didn't need to do it, but it's just too fun, man. I I mean, we can just keep doing stuff. Like, they cannot block, and they are stacking poison while they cannot attack us. Uh, Otawara is actually okay. So we don't play lands. We have enough mana. Like, we basically get two free mana every turn. So at this point, every spell is super cheap for us forever. We could farewell, but we don't need to, because we can absolutely buffer all of this. So, yeah. It feels like, you know, they're fighting, but in, in reality we are just getting maximum value from every single card we have, and uh, the end is inevitable. They have caverns, uh, so I need to pay attention to this one. They really want to flip this, but it will cost them a lot of cards. One of the small, you know, things... Oh, they're actually going with it. Sure, my friend, sure. And the point is that Recruiter doesn't do anything, simply because uh, it deals damage. Uh, right now only poison matters, really. And I can still block everything, man. Go for it. Full swing. That's what that's what you are for, you know, in the game for. Alright, let's start. I still want to have Mirex untapped. I'm not sure if we will be able to use it, but for, not forget this is also a mana. So... 
Well, I guess we'll start using some spells, so we probably won't get there. Uh, so, let's go for the blockers. Blockers. So, we go for the might tokens, because they are the only things that matter right now. Well, I guess I could just go for the march. Right? And then I have three mana. I don't really get you know, hyper value. I could Otawara one of the tokens. It's more mana efficient this way, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of okay. It's kind of okay. We don't care about the damage. It's only about this poison. Uh, at some... What's with the... Our client, please? Alright, I think uh, it's their face, right? I hope. Okay, okay. Magic finally did it. So we got one poison, and that's kinda it, because we have another march, so we can live gain so much. We probably are at 50 or 60, realistically. Because uh, when we cast the march, we will probably have so much mana. Alright. Well, this is definitely something we can cycle, so let's go with it. We don't need a land, and we absolutely don't need the Mind Space Apparatus. And see, with this... Uh, Raffin Tower is okay, but on this turn we know that we want, we can cast Robbery, so this is extra card basically. Uh, I can start going with this, but it's not really needed. They have the last card, it could be the case. We don't need to care about the damage, like even if they have like some crazy recruiter into recruiter because of the, you know, adventure, it's not enough damage, especially with the, with the march. And I will probably cast a huge robbery, steal literally half of their deck or something like this. And I will start playing their own creatures against them, which would be absolutely epic. This is why we are playing control. This is the sweet part. Oh, really? Really? You know what? I'm taking five damage, man. Like, this is so bad that I, I can absolutely ignore it fully. Even, like, whatever the... Wow. Wow, man, he outsmarted me on this one. Now he loses the creature. You could, you know, also kill this and save your creature and go on with the poison. But, of course, you can keep killing your creature. Like, I think they have seen so much removal on their own creatures that they are like, oh, removal, I need to cast it on the red creature. So, you know, it's a, a little bit of a shortcut to get to your mythic. <laughs> no mercy on the red deck. So yeah, uh, when he sees the robber, I think he will scoop really quickly. Let's start counting our cool mana. Four, seven, plus fourteen. Oh my god, we are we are stealing twenty-one cards from this guy when he ends the turn. Oh man, he won't like it. Oh, he won't like it. Imagine how many creatures we'll be able to play while also keeping all the removal. I think this man. I <laughs> oh, he wants to draw it on the next turn. At least we know what we are stealing. Gleeful demolition. All right. I mean, this. Okay, guys. This will be as brutal as it gets, and I know you are here for it. For it. So, he thinks it's a good deal, right? He's getting ahead. Well, not exact. <laughs> oh, four, seven, fourteen. Man, when I'm counting while recording, my mind just, you know, absolutely breaks. Okay, 4, 7 and 14, so 21. Right? I did it right. I don't need to make a token because we are... Like, look at this, guys. Against Boros. Like, how is this not the best day of your life? Even Arena just cannot believe what is going on. I hope I don't get roped just by, you know, the delay. Well, nice cards, bro. Uh, if I draw a robber, I can literally mill him uh, before he draws the next card. So that would be like 38 cards on the mill. Man, Arena is just dying on me, I think. It wasn't predicted that this kind of power is possible. Oh no, he's roping. He's actually roping. Uh, I think, guys, I think we got the rope. 
<laughs> I told you, man. Why are they still in the game? And they're salty because they didn't realize when they really lost. They lost like 10 turns ago. And they just decided to keep going. So, of course, you know, it will be painful death for them. And that makes them a little bit salty. But you know what? We, we embrace it. We enjoy it. Because we, I mean, we are on the other side. We don't mind this one. Well, 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 a roping aggro deck with red mana. I cannot believe my eyes, but somehow, somehow it happened. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what is going on here? Okay, the explosion happened. I told you, I told you, man. Uh, so we wanted to farewell everything, play his own deck against him, and he has one card from his own deck, while we have 26 cards from his deck. I think that was a worthy win con. I hope you guys enjoyed this game. Alright, this is a little bit weird hand. Of course, we don't need double mind spice separatus, but if we hit Faithful Mending, we can cycle one of them. And by being on the play, we're actually pretty good at magic. Uh, however, I'm a little bit scared. It's a very clunky hand, but a playable one, you know? And we take playables. Like, moment we cast, we definitely need four land and we need one memory dish. And when we get there, we will fix everything. Okay, this is actually really good. This should probably fix all of our problems, I think. I don't see blue mana, so I'm not casting it right now. You know, this is a good target for normal eyes because it basically, you know, the nice cycling of four cards. So if I've seen blue, I could just try to play around it. All right, so what do you do exactly? I remember you, but I still will read you. Uh, enters the battlefield's cry, so he will get it. I mean, sure. So while we are reading, he might be, you know, scrying his stuff. Whenever attacks were saddled at end of combat, exalted. Uh, so just a blink effect, basically. Interesting. This is probably something we should kill, but so because we didn't hit a land, I need to make a worse play. And he will probably be able to saddle it and get some value and we'll be in some trouble and then we deadly cover up. All of this because I don't have land and I cannot risk that I miss it. We might still miss after this, but thankfully we didn't. Alright, this is definitely out. Negate is, is a good card, but maybe it's something we we can live without. I definitely need memory the rush. That's a, that's a rough, you know. Miss. I, and I think the minutes was the second card, so we would indeed lose the land drop. And that would be huge because we cannot cast uh, Mind Spice Apparatus, which means basically we cannot make our strategy. Hopeless Nightmare. I mean, it really does hurt. Okay, so we are in a different mode right now. We are in the mode of, I'm playing the whole game on four lands, please don't discard more. He will discard more. And he will saddle as well. That's really bad, man. Oh, he cannot play it because his mana is wrong. That's huge. He needs double black and one white for this play. And he has double white, one black. Man, why would you play a planes if you need a, a swamp, you know? <laughs> Unfortunately, he can saddle it. And I really don't want uh, to give him any value. But you know what? I don't think he gets any value, right? Attacks while sell, yes. At the end of combat, exile it. Then return immediately. So he gets actually negative value from this, right? I, I think I'm, I, I understand it correctly. Is it May? No, it, you exile it. Like, sure. So we get two damage and this becomes worse. It's good in the deck or normally, but you need other targets than the Loyal Seed, right? Because that's not something you want to get it back into your hand, because the, the cost is pretty high. Yes, yeah, so they didn't even go for it. Oh, the Scry. All right, I, I'll take the Scry. The Scry is fine. See, I'm reading and I still don't understand it fully. All right, but now we got Mindswave Separatus, so we need to go whole game around it, man. We can let the cover up. Or we can just go for the throats on the fortune. The problem is if they start bouncing a lot of stuff in between. So deadly cover up could be great. But I think we just go memory douche. Especially that we probably want to... Yeah, I, this will be hard game because they can get so much value. But maybe we can endure it. Maybe we can endure it. They need to also saddle it. So that means they cannot attack with the pixie. 
This is so scary, man. So I think we go memory doors just to get more cards so we can possibly have something to discard. It's hard to go with this deadly cover up, man. Okay, uh, the choice is kinda easy. And we actually have a good discard now. See, that was a good call. And I still have go for the throat. So it, so they want to... It's not saddled. Okay. Uh, that's, I expected them to saddle. I can take this for damage. Especially that we have counter spells. So if, when we stabilize finally and get all the discounts, we're absolutely fine with stuff. Yeah, I think we won. He didn't put enough pressure right now. Oh, he might have blink effect, right? No, all right. Okay, I like, we are getting really ahead right now. And every turn, don't forget, every single turn we are getting this extra value. And that's why it's so strong. Like we start scaling. So if we can keep up with our opponent, like neutrally, that means in two turns we'll be super ahead. Especially with this in the graveyard. Also three steps ahead is really insane with, you know, copying my spice apparatus when you get into those higher, you know, counter numbers. Mirex is okay, but it will be too slow. Here's your two damage for the turn. And see, uh, he, he had a really strong opening and it was super scary, but when they break for a single moment, when they don't have everything perfectly, suddenly you are like a juggernaut just rolling over them. Like, it's a very fine line between, you know, surviving with apparatus and dying with apparatus, but you can absolutely do it, and when you get to this breaking point, after you stabilize, like, you have a completely deck on a different level than your opponent. They still have something, they might have... Uh, Alright, this is a deadly cover-up target. That's good. Now I, I know exactly my place. This does absolutely nothing. And this is a great moment to get the maximum value flashback memory Darush. Alright, this is important. What do we take? Virtue of Persistence seems really good against this deck, honestly. And I kinda like Deadly Cover Up. March is nice. But this can exile stuff. But this is live game and instant. So I will take, you know, we will have some variety here. What do I discard? Probably Pixie. Pixie is the reason this deck even works. And we don't have much value, but we will still play this. Our opponent tries to pressure us, but it won't work. Mind Splice and Negate. Yeah, we go with the Pixie, I think. It's super cheap and it works perfectly with the Hopeless Nightmare. Uh, probably one of their best interactions because uh, when you see the number of our cards, it's actually pretty small. Like we have really strong cards, but uh, you know, not many of them. Here's Liliana. He's waiting with her, man. Like he's lurking, just waiting for this perfect moment. Yeah, I think this is the same version uh, I was playing. Well, not really because Flash Gorger isn't here and the Fortune. Uh, but I think I've seen this version. So, we have three counters. That means we can go for the card door, right? Instead of five mana, it will cost two mana. So, we actually pay two mana for nearly full effect. Then I can... No, I need three more. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, we absolutely have to go like this. What is in his hand? Basically a top deck and nothing more. Yeah, and it gets discount by three. Yeah, we would have to pay... 8 minus 3, so 5 for the copying of this. But it's good. I don't need a land here. Like, we'll draw something with memory doors because you don't have selection with this discount, so it means you probably take all the lands you get. And the uh, Spirited Companion is very nice draw. It's a card that is basically free, but it will be too slow, too little, and too weak. And I think we are closing to casting Virtue of Persistence because, well, his cards are pretty good. Oh, Normalize is great. So let's start with this one. And he cannot even pressure. Oh man, with Robber it's absolutely over. Absolutely over. Do I even need to kill this? Yeah, I think we kill it for a simple reason. Because this is sorcery speed, so it's it's a little bit hard to use. And I don't want him to have any kind of bounce spells. And we have perfectly the memory douche. Yeah, we won. It, it was close for a moment, man. I think we were, you know, in some heat. But uh, we absolutely are outscaling him. And our deck is just starting to get value. His deck basically ended. Like, 
he he's nearly out of gas and ours is just starting to get you know velocity acceleration man we probably get our full potential in like 10 turns <laughs> And we meal for 50 or so. Don't tell me he will rope me after all of this. Guys, unfortunately it happened. That was a full rope. Well, our opponent realized that probably his deck is not as powerful as ours. Liliana was his basically last play. So we'll take our value. We'll take some fun because if our opponent doesn't want to have fun in magic, we will have it for him. And let's go for this one. This is a very good draw. So we, we got a counter spell and this is insane because right, we will get the fifth counter. That means uh, instead of what, eight, five, seven, eight mana, we pay three. So we pay the normal cost, but we have all the modes, including doubling apparatus, which means that March and robbery will be insanely scaling. And in three turns, we will just mill them for 20 cards after sweeping the board or something like it. And here you go with the uh, explosion that I think we all deserve. Man, this deck is like a beast. When this gets going, like your opponent is just out of the game, like they're all super salty. And nice, we, we got the diamond tree with this one, so that's that's a good sign. All right, so we are on the draw, which means that we aren't very good at the game. We have Mindsphere Separatus, but if we can get this rolling, you know what? That's kind of okay, I think. I'm considering March. So, yeah, I think we go March. I need Mindsphere Separatus. I need every single land I have. Yeah, I, I, this is actually a good draw. We want to go to four. Will be a bit awkward on normalize because his tree drop can be pretty good. All right, so that means he didn't play a creature. So let's imagine he played a creature right now. All right. Uh, okay, uh, that's a little bit too many lands. So do we go with Tawara to start getting some control over the game? I think so because we can use the next turn to tap land, probably uh, Reef. Then we yeah. All right, we got the. See if they can discard our cards, but. You know, they, they still lose one card as well, so at some point we both get messy draws and, you know, like we fight on scraps a little bit. Well, that was a, that was an interesting showcase. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because it's true, right? He missed two land drops, I believe, one or two, and that means against a control deck that keeps curving out, uh, he will just fall super behind. Like, they cannot get us to zero cards, so we would, you know, just go off, basically. All right, so we will see. I'm not sure exactly. It's probably Azor's control with the Anchorages, right? And Miraxes. Yep. Seems like it. Uh, let's actually play a lot of lands. With Robbery, we should be able to translate every single land into a new card. So, you know, we go with it. Uh, this is his chance to cast a small Jace. Uh, but it's fine. So now we are probably keeping up with some of our counter spells. I will probably start to use Faithful Mending. Do I need Farewell? Probably not. Oh, he missed a land drop. That's huge. He's on the play. So it's actually a big deal. For 3 mana you cannot cast Ember, which means you cannot punish it very well. So that means you probably pass the turn and that's it. Oh boy. So Robert, uh, so Memory Dish is amazing. March is something that sometimes is useful. We have plans for two turns, so I will a little bit risk it. I want to punish him for missing a land drop. Oh, this would be way better to discard. We need to go with Mirax before he has Field of Ruin. We want to, you know, stack as much pressure. And he needs to top deck a land. If he doesn't top deck land, I think he loses. Yep. See? I absolutely outplayed this guy by playing Mirex and he getting mana screwed. And you know, this is the fun part. I told you before he scooped that if he misses two land drops against Mirex, he will lose, especially that we had a counter spell and memorials and even robbery. So he was actually really out of game already <laughs> by just missing land drops. All right, guys, another day, another resolution from my side to make an outro very quick and consistent and you know, concise, I guess. Uh, this deck, after Absolutely surprised me. I really enjoyed it. Uh, you don't really lose much because it's very similar to a classic control, but with the faithful mending, with Mindspace apparatus, you actually get more 
a sustainability against the aggro because you can start faithful mending on turn two and three so you know you know you kind of keep going uh, the most important sometimes is just playing live game lands and going into this direction of a five mana sweeper uh, also we don't play lockdowns so you know that means our sweepers are more value based especially that i went with more deadly cover ups because i wanted to make sure that our matchup against control decks will be better so you know you can just keep rolling and if you can hit those lands and make sure that your opponent doesn't kill you in time like that will be enough to win games especially with mind splice surprise so good faithful mending counter spell something later play mind splice and they are usually behind on the damage that they expect because you removed one of their threats probably the biggest one and you have a little bit extra and that means you are curving out very nicely and moment you play this at dance step and you untap you are playing a completely different game and your opponent is like oops like it's it's not looking great for me and he's right because <laughs> you probably will kill him in two turns uh, also we are not really having any downsides like we still play counter spells so against control we are on equal equal terms we don't overdo it with the robbers but it's enough to give us a lot of value we have four memorandums obviously three steps ahead that can draw your cards and here the token is actually a big deal especially if you stack a lot of counters you can stack even more counters and even though it seems it's probably not difference if you have 10 counters or 17 well with robber it makes a huge difference because then it means one robber can finish the game like you have so much going for you know for you in this day we also have unions we have marches so our life gain is absolutely insane so that means even if you are close to being that moment you get this extra briefer with my express apparatus instantly you, rec you can recover all the damage they did and you don't even need the win con because they see they cannot kill you honestly restorative reef sometimes is enough to keep them at bay and if you have 40 life i mean reef will kill them faster you know so i really enjoyed this deck i think like this is the only combination for control for Mindspace apparatus I think we didn't do uh, for the you know main ones Azorius, Dimir and Esper and I don't know why I had this idea I forgot and it feels to be working perfectly from white you get all the best sweepers you know for a while also some life gain and mending uh, from blue of course the cardo Mindspace apparatus and three steps ahead and from black of course all the best removal also it means that we have three go for the throats and one virtue and three marches so that means if you meet a planeswalker deck I mean, you have a really decent answers, right? You have so many counter spells that most of the planeswalkers will die, and those that go through, you just march them. So it, it just has a decent matchup against everything. It's super fun to play, and it's an Asper. Like, guys, that's one of the best we can get. I think it's, it's also pretty fresh. So I enjoy the, the gameplay, even though, of course, we play mostly control here. So I really hope you enjoy it. And as always, the outro was wrong. I tell you, man, it's mission impossible for me, but I'm trying, okay? I'm trying. So thank you guys if you waited until the end. If you were interested in the deck, I really appreciate it. Uh, and just a huge thank you for you being here every day. Like, it, it makes, you know, creating those decks so much fun because I already think, well, they will love it. And, you know, then I'm looking at the comments, all the stuff. So thank you for all of them. So that's kind of it. And see you guys tomorrow.